no wackers, mate. Just keep it up. Okay, we are back on the podcast. We have the... You aren't the first repeat, but you are special because you are the first Valorant voice actor that I had on the podcast. And you kind of started this whole thing. I think, <laughs> I think that because of you, people trusted and I kind of, it kind of spiraled. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think I, that it's, it's all I because of you. So. Go ahead. If you're going to say something. Oh, no, no, no. I'm disagreeing with you. Yeah. Well, I think that they were like, oh, okay, well, you know, like one of us has done it, so I'll do it. And then mm -hmm. it was like two of us, three of us. And then it was like, you had spoken to fucking everyone. So everyone was like, oh, I guess this is the guy that you do an interview with when yeah. you book the job. <laughs> It comes with the job, absolutely. It does, yeah. You're in the contract now. <laughs> um, yeah, have you have you gotten to spoke to speak to the um, or have you gotten in touch with the deadlock voice actor at all? I messaged with her very briefly, but I wasn't as on it as I normally am. But mm -hmm. I messaged Nora, and she seems fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, yeah she, she said everyone was like, she was like, it's very overwhelming, which I, everyone feels that way. And she said mm -hmm. that everyone was really nice. So that's really good. I'm sure everyone had messaged her, you know, because when I followed her and messaged her, everyone already followed her, like all the other VAs. So I was- And, and me, yeah. <laughs> and Dexty. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, uh, I was happy about that. Rainbow, Rainbow's ready. She's ready to come on camera. Are you ready for your cameo, Rainbow? She loves, she loves podcasts. <laughs> how's she been feeling lately um she has been uh <laughs> oh hang on right, sorry sorry about this <laughs> girl, okay girl girl come on now just hang on a second stop it stop it um she she's been like up and down honestly like this morning she was acting a little weird like since the stroke her health hasn't been great mm. but she's blind now She's like partially blind, so she can still see some shapes according to the vet. And I definitely think so, think that's the case. Um, she's she's definitely like she's, you know, it's sad to realize that like, you know, she's getting older and that her health is deteriorating. I think for a seventeen year old cat, she's absolutely unbelievable. But yeah, I do think her health is you know deteriorated a little did, bit since the stroke. Did you get her when she was fourteen? Yeah. What made you yeah. get a 14 year old cat? Well, what happened, what happened was you got to go down, honey. Um, what happened was I had, I was friends with this couple that were married and they had a divorce and they had three cats and a dog. And she was the most difficult cat as in the most needy, I think. And, she, and one, and the, the wife wanted to move back wanted to move back to the country they were from. So she wanted to go back to another country that she's mm -hmm. from and kind of just sort of left me with her a little bit. Um, it wasn't quite as thought out as like, I don't really like, I didn't really realize I was going to have her permanently. And then it kind of just became a permanent thing. And like, I'm really, really grateful that it happened. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know that I fully grasped the weight of adopting a, such an elderly animal mm. and what comes along with that. It's kind of become more clear to me recently, but she's a blessing in my life and I'm lucky that it happened. And I'm glad she's with me because I can handle her. Like I don't find her to be, she's just hilarious. She's just a needy, wacky little creature, you mm -hmm. know? So she doesn't bother me. And if she bothered them, then like that's their loss to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah. I I love it. I love, I, I just seeing her personality through social media is awesome. <laughs> I feel like I love when a cat has, has personality. I feel that way with my, <laughs> my older cat where I just think he's so funny. Yes. Like, I'm just yes. like, every time I walk in the door, he like stretches and then plops down on his belly or on his back and like wants you to rub <laughs> his belly. So like seeing the personality shine through is awesome. Yeah, I I just love animals in such a way. Like they're just so fucking amazing and we're so lucky. They're like the best. We're mm -hmm. so lucky to have them in our lives. So, you know, I hope that I get to have animals for the rest of my life. But yeah, she's just she's just so funny. She's a wacky little creature. Do you have animals <laughs> growing up in Australia? Yeah, we just had dogs though. We had 
th- we had one actually died very she was very young she didn't survive for very long which was really sad but we had three um yeah and they were really really good but I'm I think us having dogs was really part like important I do think kids should have a pet yeah because it helps you understand you know animals and shit and you're not scared of them yeah that is true I think it's also um important like to take care of something when you're younger too and like that can be true it can be really good for like principles um just kind of your character yeah that's a really good point Mm -hmm. yeah yeah no they're really i think it's really good to have an animal and i think otherwise you are afraid of them Mm. you know which is a problem yeah i never i my parents would never let me get a cat for when i was younger i always we had one cat um but that i don't feel like it lasted very long we always had dogs as well is there yeah is there any Maybe this is super American thing to say, but I'm just going to say it. I feel like we're <laughs> friends here. Um, is there right? any uh, anim- or like pets that Australians have that Americans don't keep as pets? Have? No, I don't think so. Uh, the same old stuff, really. Yeah, like pretty much, you mm. know, cats, dogs, bunnies here and there, like yeah no the the same old stuff no one has like a pet kangaroo or anything like that do you get uh, annoyed by uh, uh australian serious types at all i get i do get actually and i and i really probably need to like work on this a little bit but i do get really annoyed by constant commentary on my voice mm. in every situation that i'm in like i think i expect it obviously with as a voice actor like in a in a if i post a clip of me doing a sky's voice or whatever like people are going to have an opinion on that and that's totally fine well it's not really i mean i only want the opinions to be positive but (laughs) (laughs) but i can't control it but um but i understand that people are going to have an opinion but it does bother me how freely people feel they can comment on my voice as people that are american or yeah, pretty much American. I'm not trying to throw shade on Americans because I love Americans, but I don't need constant commentary on my voice because some of it is like, I don't think anyone's intention is to be offensive, but mm-hmm. sometimes it does offend me. I'm not going to lie. And I I think I'm just a little tired of some of the like, I'll like be at the store or something and I'll say something. And then it's some of it's fine. Like, where are you from? And you do get a little bit sick of having the same conversation with people like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I'm from Australia, but like, whatever, that's no big deal. But like, oh, you don't sound why do you sound so American if you're from Australia? Well, I've lived in America for nine years. Or why do you sound so Australian if you live in America? You should sound more American. And like almost like this policing of how I talk. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, And and then sometimes Australians, if I'm like run into Australian in some situation, they'll be like, oh, you have a Bogan accent or you have too much of an American accent. And really it bothers me because I'm already like, I feel like, you know, as a voice actor of a character that people are aware of like in the gaming space people do criticize my voice a lot and say hurtful things and that's just part of the job but sometimes you get really like you get really over it like it's just I'm just gonna be honest you're just like can you Uh just leave me alone (laughs) yeah like you know it's just how I talk I don't know Mm -hmm. I think even like I just had a really weird analogy come to my head I'm just gonna put it out there it's like if something doesn't hurt like say you're poking someone and it doesn't hurt eventually it's just gonna get like tired and like sore and so like (laughs) if you just keep saying it over and over again like i understand that it's not like the first time it really hurt your feelings but for like over time it's just annoying to hear all the time because i get this i get some of the similar comments that i see about because like if i put you in a video like it's just constant like the saying like the australian no or you know yeah just like stuff like that i I don't know if that's like exactly what you're talking about but like yeah i do get it a lot and i see it a lot and it's just always constantly something that they have to comment on yeah and and you know what i know it's all largely in good in good humor Mm -hmm. and and you know people are not trying to hurt my feelings but you're just, you know, if you're having a bad day and you see too many people, and I mean, sometimes they are blatantly hateful. Like I had this one guy that made that TikTok that he said, like everyone in Australia hated my voice. And I was scrolling through um, 
TikTok and that was on my For You page. And boy, was it a jump scare. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, fuck, bro. So, you know, like, whatever. It's, it's, I try not to focus on the negative, but I know that the other voice actors have experienced stuff like that. But that's kind of part of the job, you know? So I probably mm-hmm. need to get over it. And it- I won't, <laughs> but I probably do. <laughs> At least you're self aware that you should. <laughs> Yeah. And that you're not gonna. Yeah, totally. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> but I just think I think that it could be very frustrating because I hate the the um like the accent thing because everyone has an accent and like mm-hmm, where you're from totally. everyone sounds like how they're supposed to to you. And where I'm from <laughs> everyone sounds like they're supposed to right. to me. And so sure. like it's when people say like you have an accent it's just i mean yeah we all have accents are mm. different but a lot of americans say they don't have an accent they're like oh i don't have an accent and i'm like you have an american yeah. accent yeah it doesn't but make any like, sense that's just so weird to me but yeah there's some kind of weird disconnect between understanding that mm-hmm. um maybe if you haven't traveled a lot you don't realize that other people talk differently to you although one assumes that everyone knows that within america there are different dialects mm-hmm. so I don't know. It's very strange, but, um, and, and again, again, this is not, you know, I'm a white woman living in America. Like it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm actually about to become a citizen. Oh yeah. I, I see. I feel like I'm, I've been figuring out so much about you because I've been watching an hour of you each week <laughs> That's true. and just going through, you say something and I'm like, I knew that, but oh, it's like, you didn't God. actually tell me. And I feel weird about it. <laughs> why? Did... Because you have to edit for me? Yeah. Is that why? Yeah. That's so funny. And so, I, so funny. I'm like, yeah, I knew that you were going to become an American citizen. But... Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening to this and you're like, what the fuck are they talking about? Um, Texture edits the um, po- the social media clips from my podcast, mm-hmm. Blood, Sweat and Games, that I host with Morgan Lynn. So he has to listen to to our, my voice just ad nauseum <laughs> i do and it and it's it, it's really it's a lot better than editing my own stuff because i didn't live it and so mm-hmm. like i'm not going back and listening to something because like yeah. i'll make mental notes i don't know if you do this too with your podcast but like i'll make mental notes be like oh that that would be a pretty good clip and yeah, then yeah, so yeah, yeah. then i'm thinking about it and then i'm redoing it and then i have to go back in and edit it and listen to it again it's like uh yeah well a big part of the reason why I said to Morgan initially like we could have done the clips ourselves we could have you know learned it we wouldn't have been as good as you but you know whatever we probably could have figured it out Mm -hmm. but something I said to Morgan was like it's just gonna get it's it's gonna be I I'm a big believer in outsourcing things that are going to create like pain or anguish for you to whatever degree right like I didn't want to sit there and rewatch myself because it's already so cringy to me. Like, and I already have to do it with TikTok. Yeah. So I was like, I don't really want to do this. Like let's outsource this. And it's the same reason why I went to a lawyer to, to do my citizenship. I could have done that myself and I would have saved truly thousands of dollars than paying a fucking lawyer. But I get really bad anxiety around filling out paperwork. And it's like a big cause of like, procrastination and anxiety for me and so I was like if I do it through a lawyer I'm held accountable they just say here are the documents you fill them out it's going to be a process that I'm going to be led through so I'm all about it's essentially managing my ADD but it is it's a, it's a very like easier it's just easier you, I think that's a smart way to do things outsource your issues yeah Out, outsource yeah. your issues I think that's I think that's yeah. something that maybe I should do a little bit more instead of yeah being a solo operation over here yeah for sure you should start trying to um like apply for jobs doing social media management or coordination like freelancing like just so you start building a resume yeah and doing extra work i've i've done some stuff like trying to do like fiverr so Mm. that's kind of kind of difficult i don't know if i'm doing it wrong i haven't got any jobs on editing at all really yeah but i don't think i don't think my reel like my editing reel is very good um yeah but i did have um back in like 2019 my 
when I was in high school, my guidance counselor went to school and was like best friends with someone who was an editor at Fine Fine Brothers Entertainment, which they did like the kids react, the elders react stuff okay. uh, on YouTube. And I um I did a I I talked to her quite a bit back then about editing and stuff because I was going to go to college for editing mm. um, and do that and like film and TV and stuff and then um, so I, I dove quite a bit into that and like the kind of the politics behind that stuff so I was thinking about reaching out to her see what uh, reaching oh. out to her again and see what she says that I could do for stuff like that right I think yeah I definitely think that there's some career stuff that you should be like pursuing you know mm -hmm. but i do think that good examples of your work are really key yeah and very short clips mm -hmm. you know click yeah. this link or go to this google dr uh, uh, drive you know whatever the fuck it is and and have those things available i do think that's the the best way to present it is to obviously have a portfolio have a body mm -hmm. of work i really enjoyed that the episode when um morgan was talking about uh applicate or Resumes. Video game design? Yeah, like resumes and stuff like that. I thought that was oh. very insightful. Yeah, I was, I was editing that and I was like, I kind of am learning a lot here. Cause I, I, oh my God, that girl is. Yeah, I trust a, her a lot. And like, bro, she's yeah. a fucking beast. <laughs> and like, if you ever want advice, like you can, you can reach out to her. She probably would just give you advice. Like mm -hmm. she wrote, I mean, she would probably wouldn't do this for everyone, but she <laughs> wrote my resume for me. Like I sent her my old resume mm -hmm. and she redid it so that it was like a corporate resume because I was thinking about getting like a real person job. I plot twist. I didn't do it, but <laughs> I did, I went through like, you know, I, cause I had been freelancing doing social media stuff myself. And I was like, then I did it for a gaming company. And, um, then, you know, I got, <laughs> I got laid off. So I was like, okay, uh, what else is there? <laughs> and was trying to get more freelancing work. And it, it, it was, yeah, she was super helpful. Like everywhere I applied for, I basically got an interview. And I think it was because of the resume, because when I went through interviews, I was like, oh my God, like professional interviews are crazy. Mm. they're hard yeah. they really are they're a skill <laughs> um that's really cool to know that you like found that interesting um because i reckon she should start a little business as like a career cons consult you should mm. go to get the gaming industry uh yeah i i think about certain things like um i did a lot of like web developing and like websites and stuff and mm. like learned code um, you know how to code a couple like a couple languages Ish. yeah, uh, yeah. I, have, I have a couple of certificates and in, in certain languages and code but i don't really use it ever um but you it's a huge nerd is that what's going on yeah you didn't know i was a huge nerd <laughs> i didn't really actually huh <laughs> I, I am a huge nerd Oh, I didn't realize that you were nerdy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm into, like, superheroes and computers. And I found you... I never you, thought about it. I found you through Valorant. So I don't know what you expected. I'm not, I mean, I played I a lot of sports dead. growing up. But I'm kind of like... I, I played a lot of sports. I'm very... Yeah, maybe that's what confused me. I'm very, like, balanced. Like for and you have all a lot of friends too. Like you have like you weren't like you weren't dorky. Like you no, were, you were... no. I just I'm just into what I'm into and like yeah. I for like eighteen years of my life I was like sports and then like sp sprinkled in there I was like playing video games. But now I'm like more. I don't even play video games really anymore. I just kind of do podcasts. So like yeah. I'm more into this stuff. I try to keep up with like as much as possible but i'm definitely like when you met me i was like into valorant i was playing it all the time it was mm -hmm. just kind of like a phase and now i'm more like i kind of do things i do other things and i and i know you appreciate that because i've heard some of your stances on on doing other things outside of video games oh yeah no i'm i'm just you know like i worry a little bit and i do but i do honestly think that a lot of the kids that are so into it are 
either at the point where they're making so much money from streaming that it's like it's their income so of course they have to sort of you know keep up with it Mm -hmm. but I also think that they um it is often a phase you know Mm -hmm. you get you get you grow up you go to college whatever sometimes you just you know there's more they become more casual gamers but sometimes especially with like the should I sweat this stuff on the pod I'm like y'all y'all need to step outside sometimes (laughs) you know yeah i mean which is valid because i think at like the worst of my mental health was not exercising the my my brain of like outside or human activity yeah that's that's and you know what as well it's a very like i'm viewing this whole situation from my perspective of my own mental health mm -hmm. and like I know that for me, and it's very different for other people. So I acknowledge that. But for me personally, like I get a lot of my happiness from seeing people, like even as you said for you, like just going to the gym or like when I go to my Pilates class and just, I'm just around people or whatever, I feel happier. So I just am a very social person and that's how I, isolation is really bad for me because I will, I will just kind of think too much and stuff. So Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's just not a good choice for me. And actually like, um, last year I was freelancing and, and, you know, the entertainment industry has changed so much because, um, I used to go to all my auditions in person and now I've since COVID everything's self-tape, right? So, and all my voiceovers are obviously, I record them at home Mm -hmm. and I just over winter was by myself at my fucking apartment, I was basically living alone, you know, and I was just by myself a lot unless I, 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 you know, had plans with friends and stuff. And my mental health was absolutely terrible. It was just fucking diabolical. So I really realized that I was like, I don't know, like, you know, for me, like, I don't, I can't just be like, okay, I'm just, especially now with all these strikes in LA, like, and there is no work. Like, I'm like, okay, I have to get like a job. I have to get a waitressing job. I have to at least be in a situation where I have the ability to just be more social. It's not healthy for me as a person, you know, it's too much isolation is not good for anyone. We weren't built for that life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially, uh, yeah, I felt that way, like during COVID where. Oh yeah. I didn't, I was so afraid to get sick because of like being diabetic and like yeah. I just didn't know what was going to happen so I was like I'm just not going to see anyone and that spiraled into not a, a very good place but I was the, the the worst part about it was the fact that I was doing so well on social media so like because I, I was putting in so much time I wasn't seeing when I wasn't doing anything I was doing so well I felt like you know I was crushing it and so I was like I felt like I gave up this part of my life and then, you know, my dreams went up, but it was like, I have to balance that. Like I, mm-hmm. I, it's not good for me to post every day and think about it all the time. Cause like I would be, I mean, I still do it. I'll like close my eyes and about be ready to go to bed and then I'll shoot up and like write something down on my notes because I'm like, I do the same it. thing. And it's like, I just can't even like let it cause I'm afraid I'm gonna forget it when I go to sleep. Like I'm never yeah. going to remember it again. So uh-huh. But it's, it's so funny you say that thing about posting every day because I've just been so unhappy with my TikTok and I mm-hmm. just feel like my growth is so slow and, you know, I'm just like, oh my God, like I'm such a flop. Like I really feel like bad about myself mm-hmm. and I am going through this period where I am equating so much of my self-worth to the numbers that I'm getting and I'm just like not getting great views right now and I also feel like for me, I want to make more comedy content, but those videos often don't do very well for me. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't get the views that I get for other stuff. So I'm kind of in a funny, a funny place. And actually I was thinking, cause I have, you know, stuff that I have to do. And I was writing down like that I should, cause I have all these ideas for sketches. And I was like, maybe I should take a break from, from TikTok and not post for like even just a week or two weeks and just like come back with more of a, zest Mm. you know what i mean yeah i'm close to a month without posting on tiktok right now really yeah oh my god Uh, how do you feel i kind of feel like a piece of shit (laughs) 
Um, oh, good, good, yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> I. It's it's difficult for me because my the, the video that I just posted has is that like eight hundred twenty five thousand views. My last video. Holy fuck! And it's like, is that the Disney kid? Yeah. Oh my god. And so, Slay. it's hard for me to. I I do this often where I experienced it when we when my first video with you had over a hundred thousand. I would like I think someone had said to me like, oh, what are you going to do next? And I was like, oh, that's so, that's so social media where it's mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, that's cool. But you have to post again. Like you have yeah, to, yeah, 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 and yeah, it's yeah. human nature to be like, oh, I want to do that again. I want to equal that or top it. And so mm -hmm. I'm sitting here like, I really don't have anything that that's good to, to post right now. And mm. I think, I don't know. It's just been tough because I did so many things back to back. So like I did the, I did the Phoenix voice actor, then I did Gecko, and then I did the, the Streamly panel. And then so like I started to post each one of them, but then they started to overlap and I didn't go back at all. So there is still content, like there's still meat on the bone back there. Yeah. But yeah. I haven't just, I haven't gone back. And so why don't you why don't you do that like why don't you set yourself a, a t or are you just feeling like so unmotivated i just feel i don't know i i get on to do to do something and i'll just look at like my software and it's just i just can't like i just feel like everything that i come up with like every idea or things that i put together just isn't very good that's such a i think that's first of all really just a part of being a creative yeah there's just those times yeah yeah but it but it, i'm not trying to diminish your feelings because that's very valid mm -hmm. and i experience that regularly yeah and it's it's such a difficult thing because you know you exist in a space where you can actually literally equate success with a number right yeah and it's whether it's a follow account or a view or a like like that's the world that we live in and um you know we can say a million times over that you shouldn't base your self-worth on that but when that is your career or that's how you make a living or it's or it correlates to your career right mm -hmm. it's like it's it's just it's just very i get opportunities because people know of know that I'm the voice of a certain character or because I've done certain acting jobs or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's just the reality of the world that we live in and it's hard to not get down. But I do think that just allow yourself to go through that journey and, yeah. and maybe there's some other place that you can find inspiration, you know, like maybe, I don't know, sometimes just even going to the movies or like reading a book will, mm -hmm. will really, help you you know yeah i think that a lot of times when i do new content and i'm excited to put something out then i can kind of get back into it there's just some dead times where i just don't get guests on my podcast that it is a little frustrating to like have to rely on other people to do content fuck yeah bro oh my <laughs> god it's fucking the worst yeah it's terrible you know because there's so it's many the worst and i understand like I, everyone will understand like i don't want to sound like in any sort of way but like there's just a lot of false promises in yeah. this industry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the amount of times that i was gonna do a podcast with someone like my what if list of mm -hmm. like people who are like yes and then just ghosted me afterwards yeah. like i would be hi. A, what hi hi yeah. hi number yes yeah. i would be a very very large creator if i got some of these people that were like yes Same. and then backed out Same. like i would right. be out there with some uh, like joe rogan numbers <laughs> but yeah i i told and i thought that yeah, no, I, I was going to stop myself from saying that. But, like, I get it. Mm -hmm. And it's actually when we first created Blood, Sweat and Games, the podcast I have with Morgan, we initially had, you know, back and forth with people that are so big in the gaming space yeah. that we felt like, you know, this is just going to, it's going to skyrocket. It's going to be a really big thing. And 
and then just trying to get those interviews and realizing how honestly fucking difficult (laughs) people can be like difficult rude or you get on a fucking interview with someone and they bring you nothing like if Uh, they're just dead inside and you're like ew so yeah I definitely get it. And that was when we changed the structure of the podcast so Mm -hmm. that there would be interviews occasionally, but like less. Um, So that's another thing that you could consider is like doing less um, interviews and having it be something where you do more, you play or you're like, okay, this is how you get good at this character because you're a really good gamer. Mm, Thank you. I've heard this about you. So (laughs) I, you know, you could teach people. You could like, yeah. You know, do episodes on your, like, what's your fucking take on kick? You know, like, that's, there's so many things in the space that you could do that don't involve you having to ask other people to be a part of your your project, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, people are difficult. And I, yeah, I have this, I've never said that, I've never told this uh, story, but I had this pretty large streamer who, you know, I was talking to back and forth, like he was, kind of interested i could tell i it was still going to take some convincing or he was thinking about it and he just said like like i just don't think it's worth it or like i don't think and i was like i just wow. oh you just ruined it for me like i just don't like you anymore <laughs> like i just don't think it's worth it oh, it's it is crazy to to really know how some people view things in the mm-hmm. in in like the space of social media. Mm-hmm. Some people truly, truly like our actual like I I can't even tell you like how many people will legitimately just do things for clout. Yeah. Or are just interested in people for clout. Like things are so like the it is what all of those stereotypes really, really do exist. Mm-hmm. Um, people can really be like users. Like it's kind of crazy, you know? Yeah, I think at a certain point, like there is some sort of like you have to have, like I have to provide some sort of service to you. Like it can't, like I, either like a good interview, like good questions or whatever. I have to give you something because you're giving me something like time or um exposure whatever the case is like there is a give and take but yeah i'm not i'm not making anyone blow up like i i don't say that you know if you come on my podcast you're gonna gain this many followers and stuff. yeah like that's not why i'm asking you to come like i'm asking just to share a good conversation after every interview i tell people you don't have to retweet this you don't have to repost this like i don't care what you do after that like you gave me enough already like being mm. here so but also well it's but it's but it's not necessarily like i understand because there's i say no to podcasts so like and mm-hmm. i'm not you know fucking whatever some big streamer but like i think that it's totally fine to be like you know what because i go through phases where i don't really want to talk or i don't feel mm-hmm. like i have anything to say necessarily yeah, but i think that it's the way like phrasing it like that like mm-hmm. yeah oh 100 like come on bro like you don't have to be so mean about it like there are ways to say things that are kinder you know Mm -hmm. yeah like no i'm i'm okay right now yeah i'm so (laughs) sorry actually my schedule won't permit it you know like i like just yeah i'll I'll reach Mm -hmm. out to you like crazy imagine dating that person (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's (laughs) crazy that would be savage being being in the industry I, i do it it is kind of like the the never meet your heroes type of th- or like never meet oh, your idols. It's just you yeah. just realize how much some people just suck, and you're like, ah oh, man, you just let me down. <laughs> but I, dude, uh, I have gone on a couple of dates with like guys on TikTok that I like. You know, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like they're like a hottie, and then like you know we start chatting and whatever, and then we go on some dates, and I'm like. Oh my god! And I like die. Like I, I see people like thirsting in their comments, and I was like, that was me. And like I'm like, I wish I could tell people the truth, like about mm-hmm. some of them, but you just can't, right? Like I'm not gonna do that. But like, and it, it's no one like massively famous or anything, but it is so crazy to me. I'm like, wow. Like you know, parasocial relationships are interesting because yeah. people can really fucking fake a personality online. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's why when people are like, you're so nice in my comments and stuff, oh, you're so nice. I'm like, mm, I'm not that nice. <laughs> yeah, you don't know me. Like, <laughs> like, I'm nice, but like, you know, don't piss me off. <laughs> yeah. I My nephews were over earlier. And I was like, they were in my room and they were playing on my bed. They were just jumping on my bed and stuff. I was like, guys, I need to, um, I have a podcast in a little bit. I need to get some questions now. And they said, we can help you with some questions. Oh so I have, God. I have three questions from my nephews. Oh, okay, great. Let's my, hear or this is from my eight-year-old nephew. These three okay. questions. Um, he said, to let you know that I've played your character a few times, because he asked me if i If you have or he has? No, that I've played your character, yes. Okay, yeah. okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, so he just Good wanted to, to let you know. Thank um, you. And then he said, have you ever been an actor or, or another actor for something? Yes, I have. Yes, yeah. I'm just a regular, I'm actually just normally a regular actor, mm -hmm. just like a TV actor. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. <laughs> and then... <laughs> You want to know if you've ever played yourself in the video game? I haven't actually, no. But I have been in the shooting range and practiced as her. You know, the place where you go and mm -hmm. practice. I've done that, but I didn't go into a live game. But mm. I played, I've played like a live game as Omen. Mm. It's funny because that's like the, it's funny that he came up with the, have you ever played yourself? Because it's like what a lot that's of people such a big ask. Question. Yeah. And it's yeah. like he's eight and he just is like, yeah, she ever played? good question. Like, yeah. okay, he's going to be a journalist. <laughs> uh, um, I do want to, I like getting to more like into acting as your motivate. I like, obviously your motivation goes up and down throughout the year, but like, how has your motivation changed from when you actually like first started acting till now? Um, I was so young, you know, it, it's changed over the years. I definitely don't have the drive that I used to have, mm -hmm. but I also used to correlate a lot of my self-worth with whether I was booking jobs or not. And to a degree, I still do that. I don't think I want it as much as I used to, but it's probably for the best that I want it a little bit less. I think yeah. that as you get older, your priorities change and, um, my priorities are like my family primarily. So Mm, I would say that I, I love it, but more a little bit uh, at a distance. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know if that makes sense, but my relationship with acting is definitely very complicated. I, my relationship with voice acting is probably better than my mm -hmm. relationship with acting has been. But I did like about two months ago, I, I went to Utah to shoot a commercial and it was like this big comedic commercial hang on Randy and um I definitely was like oh god like that's so fun and like I'm good at that like I was like <laughs> you know like I was like oh that was awesome like so I definitely still love it when I get to do it it just is like um you know it's a weird time like nothing's going on right now so it's it's strange there's still a lot of voiceover work but there's not a lot of acting work it is there there are those moments where you know if your motivation has been down for a while and just like my last podcast i did afterwards i was like that's why i love it like that's that's right yeah. there that right there that the little bit of anxiety that i get or like anxiousness and then just feeling like it was a like i crushed the interview like, yeah that's that's perfect that's what i love absolutely i i just got this little tattoo that says uh, yeah i can't even show Rainbow, good lord, I can't even show you. It's uh, it says art, mm -hmm. but I got that because I just was so like it's a the word art is more about like just my relationship with my craft, mm -hmm. like and and day to day the role that it plays in my life, and like you know I just before we recorded was recording some voiceover auditions, and I was like playing characters from like three different countries for three different jobs like mm -hmm. in these auditions that I was doing and I was like that's such a cool fucking thing to do like I'm like I'm so lucky that like I get to like read these scripts and do these funny voices and like have these opportunities and like I want to remember that like 
there's a level of art there and like I am an artist and and it's really cringy to say these things it's very cheesy you know <laughs> but it's like I have to have that relationship with it otherwise it's just so meaningless because mm -hmm. what's it all about if not like you know telling a story and like caring about a story you know yeah that's something that like I've been wanting to I mean for years I've been I think my life goal is to write a book like I've been always like I've always wanted to write and like even to now like I love comedy and I've always, I just don't know, I don't understand how to write. I think I texted you one time. I was like, when you write, like, are you writing dialogue? Because, like, I just, I don't know. Like, I didn't know if people just write, like, premises or, like, summaries or whatever of, like, things. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't understand how this stuff works. And, like. Yeah. I mean, for that, you have to, because I went to college for that. So, I oh, definitely okay. think that you should, um you should you should take a class there's actually so many fantastic online writing classes like they would be like zoom classes right so i definitely think you should take a class because i don't think it's like i wrote a feature film and i learned so much in that process um and it was very it took me like three years um and i learned a lot through that process but I definitely think a class, just from the way that I learn, I think a class would be the mm -hmm. best option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wrote a script in like when I was like 17 and I worked on it for a couple months and I just, I don't, I don't have it anymore, but I know it wasn't very good. But like just that whole thing, like I would spend, I would have my friends come over and we would just bounce ideas and I would just write a script and cause I wanted to be a filmmaker and mm -hmm. like I was gonna go to like either like the New York Film Academy or just something like in like a uh, like a film hub, pretty much just anywhere where people went and um, got jobs afterwards. And I was gonna do that, but I don't know. I I'm really interested in writing, and I kind of do side quests all the time where I just like dive into something and learn how to do something. But, I mean, you're you could still go to school for filmmaking, yeah. and 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 I think that would be really really worthwhile. I think you know a lot of people say you don't need to go to school, and I do agree to a degree, but I definitely like you have to take classes, like mm -hmm. you know, for any medium, like you can't just become an actor. You've got to have taken classes. You can't just be a voice actor. You got to take classes. You know, mm -hmm. so I definitely think that's true for for writing. Mm -hmm. Um, I do want to, are you good with some voice lines? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got some down. God, I haven't done voice lines in a long time. Mm. I remember, I wasn't, it's funny because I wasn't, the first time we did it, I wasn't going to ask you to, because I thought it'd be too weird. I didn't know if people did it, like, and if people did it in like podcasts and stuff or would want oh, to do it. And right. then I was like, I, I was, or I wasn't going to ask you for voice lines. You're like, I'll do voice lines for you. Like, I'll do voice lines for anyone. <laughs> and then that gave me the confidence to keep asking people. <laughs> well, I just assume that everyone's going to ask me to say stuff. <laughs> <laughs> someone asked me to say something the other day. I like <laughs> met someone, someone introduced me to someone and then they go, um, are you the voice of Sky? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, will you say blinded? And I was like, <laughs> blinded. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> uh, so, that's yeah, I'll I'll do it. I don't I'll do it know. in real life. I'll do it. Yeah, in I don't know podcast. if I could do it in real life though. Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you do feel like a bit of a dickhead because I was like just minding my own business and then yeah, I was like, it's, oh, okay. It's like Blinded. asking a uh, comedian like on the spot, like just tell a joke. Yeah, tell a joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I did find one that I did not. I haven't. I don't know if I've even heard it in game. Oh, okay. Um, maybe I'll just maybe i'll do the chat so i don't have yeah to... i was gonna say i'm like oh if it's long i won't remember it i think you do have some long ones i have long ones so... yeah because okay. sometimes i would see them on screen and i'd be like this is like a fucking monologue but they gave me a couple of monologues okay the uh... oh wait i did not send the one that i even wanted to um okay this this last one that i'm sending you is the one that I would like to start with. Okay. That one. 
no wackers, mate. Just keep it up. Mm. <laughs> I went back and listened to like vo individual voice lines. And mm. I think when I was originally doing research for you, um, I wasn't very, uh, I was pretty newbie to the, the voice acting space and I wasn't very appreciative of how so much performance can be portrayed with a voice. But like mm -hmm. going back through it, I was like, this is so phenomenal. Like, it sounded so good, and and then I had a moment of realization that, like, I cannot believe that I talk, like, actually talked to this person, and <laughs> I was, like, stunned, I was, this was, like, two hours ago, I was, like, this is, we've been talking for, like, two, two hours ago, <laughs> yeah, we've been talking for two years, like, pretty consistently, and I was finally, like, holy shit. You were, like, you know what, she's actually kind of okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe this acting thing, this oh, voice acting thing for yeah. her. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really like just me saying things. It's, I mean, I appreciate it, but it's not that big of a deal. But mm. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'll keep saying them for you. <laughs> um, Raina, that was savage. How did you learn to hunt like that? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, make sure to follow my pack in. They'll lead us right to the enemy. Why did I sign up for this shit? Pull your socks up. I reckon morale's going to be pretty low over there. We know what we're doing. Trust each other and we'll be fine. <laughs> when you're, like, obviously you can't talk about this, uh, most of this stuff, but, like, when you're going in now or, like, recently, or, you know, your most recent sessions with Riot, is mm -hmm. it... Is it a lot easier to understand things now than from way back? Like the stuff that's going on? Oh, yeah. Do you mean the storyline? Yeah, just like things yeah, that yeah, you're yeah. saying and stuff. Yeah, no, for sure. The first time I went in, I had no <laughs> fucking idea what was going on. I couldn't have. I couldn't have known less. It was, it was honestly like crazy how much I didn't know what mm -hmm. was going on. And now I go in and I'm, well, because I didn't even know the game, obviously. Yeah. And they didn't tell me until I got to the studio. But um, now I go in and I'm like, who's dating? <laughs> like, But is I'm it like, kind of a, Way. is it a double-edged sword now? Because now you have information in your head. Like if you yeah. get something. Well, yeah. Yeah. I always like. I'll be like, oh, fuck. Like, I'll, go, I'll make a TikTok and I'll be like, wait, I can't say that. Like, yeah. I can't say anything. Like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. and, and, but I, you just say absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's the trick. Never say anything. So that's what I really, really try to try. Yeah. To do. Cause you can't be guessing on if you're supposed to, like, if you're guessing it, then, like, if you're doubting yourself, if you're supposed to be talking about something, yeah, that's, don't say it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I probably... yeah. I definitely like make a couple of jokes on social media that I'm like, ooh, you might be like, you know, girl bossing too close to the sun with that one. Like, <laughs> you know, maybe don't. Like, I definitely, because you know, I'm like a little footloose and fancy free on on the social media, <laughs> especially on Twitter. <laughs> so sometimes on Twitter, I'm like, oh, rain it in a little, babe. But I also am like they'll probably like I would never say too much of the wrong thing and um they'll they'll t they'll tell you because I've gotten an email before like just remembering that we do look at social media and I <laughs> so they will tell you and also my agent would say something as well because I've heard from other voice actors in video games that they've gotten emails like delete that tweet like yeah. you know and like whatever and like i would never want to annoy my agent in any way shape or form so. i i've cut something out of a, i'm not gonna give away who or because it's already out now but someone did say something to me in a voice actor interview and they didn't even know i was like that is for sure not out right now and i was like i'm mm. not even gonna chance it and so that's I just... really nice of you because a lot of people would have just just included it dude i did this fucking interview once and i don't even know where it is now but this guy i swear to god he was like tr 
I don't necessarily think he was trying to get me to talk shit or anything, but mm-hmm. he was trying to spin everything in like a really negative way. Mm-hmm. And I called him out on it. And I was like, I really feel like you're trying to be so negative to get some like clickbaity thing. And like, yeah. it was really interesting. And then he did an edit of the interview and sent it to me before he posted it with this title. Like, um, it was actually about like, you know, um, when I used to stream on Twitch and people would come into my stream and like, you know, say sexual things and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was like really trying to take this angle that like, I'm getting hella harassed as a woman. And Mm -hmm. I just really wasn't. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's really interesting. I was like, oh man, like people don't always have good intentions. Yeah. I'm also scared. Like in that scenario, I'm scared of riot. Like I'm not that I feel like that, like I'm not under NDA like or anything. So I probably won't, get in trouble for anything but at the same time i don't want to be tied into anything like yeah you don't need that that's never good vibes like oh absolutely not yeah and you would never anyway i know what you're like as a person but it's just always better to just just be like just be nice in general i think and i want more interviews too and i don't want to be the guy who who lets things out and stuff totally totally yeah Yeah. but it is a tricky thing because like you just can't you can never really say anything i always feel i'm always like this is the one time in my life where i would know i know what it's like to be in a star wars movie (laughs) because i feel like if anyone can't say anything it's anyone in a star wars movie (laughs) like you know what i mean and i'm like i know what that's fucking like you can't say a goddamn thing i had another experience where I got told something that I wasn't supposed to, or like I, they meant to tell me, like off camera, off whatever, but I was supposed to keep it a secret. And yeah. it was the, like, I'm not trained for that. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. They're like, tell, like, you, like, I, I asked people afterwards, I was like, how do you do it? And I know Shannon said, like, I don't want to get sued. And like, that's why yeah. I keep my mouth shut. And I was like, that's a good, um mm. well let me tell you between me and riot games one of us has more money <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> you guys can use your imagination to that yeah one is. <laughs> yeah um you yeah you keep your mouth shut because you want to keep working and and also like you don't want to ruin the magic for anyone yeah you know like yeah want people, people want to know but they really don't they really, really don't. I ruin the ending of things for myself all the time. Yeah. And I regret it. Watching you know? a TV show or something and I'll like look up something online or or my biggest thing is uh it's like finding out your Christmas presents before Christmas yeah. and then you open it and it's like oh, like I knew this yeah. already. I still totally. do that. I'm t- I'm twenty years old and I knew my Christmas present last year and I had to fake a reaction. Oh my yeah, god. My mom still doesn't know. I saw it on her Amazon. <laughs> well, that's an accidental finding out, though. Uh, was it, though? <laughs> was I purposely looking for it? Oh um, my god. I get it. Yeah. All right. I think that's probably good. I appreciate you taking the time. I always have a great conversation with you. It's good to, to catch up. You're my uh, homie. I'll talk to you anytime. Yes, absolutely. You guys can. Uh, Everyone go check out Miranda's podcast with um, Morgan, Morgan Lynn and mm-hmm. um, the TikTok. Yeah, it's called Blood, Sweat and Games. We're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Mm-hmm. And you can follow us on social media at Blood, Sweat and Games. And you can follow me at Miranda O'Hare. Yes. And I'm trying to get to 100K on TikTok. It's been the longest journey of my life. <laughs> and I would like <clears throat> to help you to help me get there. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll get you there. Hopefully some of these clips can go. I uh, get a push get there. Some views. Yeah. All right. Um I'll catch you guys next time and I'll see you guys later. Peace.